if I have um, a dollar in the bank today, well, let me pose a question. Would you rather have a hundred dollars today or a hundred bucks in a year? Five. You're not going to spend it. Five. Oh, that's fatalist among us. So that might not be alive in a year. Or why would I wait for a year to take my money? Okay, fair enough. Um, so that's not where I was going with it, but that's a, that's a factor. Um, so if I have 100 bucks today, I'm going to invest and I'm going to have something more than 100 bucks in a year. Right? So the future value of my $100 is something more than 100 bucks today. And that depends on a couple things. It depends, number one, on what the interest rate is, how much am I earning on it, and number two, how far in the future am I talking about? Right? Am I talking in a month or five years? Okay, so that's the future value. A dollar today, that's exactly the opposite of what it should say. Is that what you would like to A dollar today. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you understand? This is talking about money received. I was talking about money invested. That was puzzling to me at first. So, um, would you rather have a. Uh, but can we just ignore that first <laughs> phrase and let me just try and make my point because this is going to make it more confusing to try and address that. That's, I don't like how that's where it is. Uh, I didn't think it was. Uh, so when I put a dollar in the bank today, or not a dollar, let's do it. Let's say a thousand bucks. And I go two years into the future. You can obviously anticipate that the thousand dollars, that the X out here is going to be some amount more than a thousand bucks, isn't it? And you would be curious to know what that is. This concept of it becoming something more than a thousand dollars in the future is called compounding. Right? We compound interest, and we can calculate a future value out here super useful for like, I want to have a down payment for a house in 10 years. And my auntie just left me some money. How much of it should I put in the bank now so that in 10 years I can have $20,000? That's a future value concept. On, on, alternatively, on the other side of it, if I know some amount in the future, and I want to bring it back to today, that's called present value and discounting. So if you're going into the future, you're compounding. If you're bringing from the future back to today, you're discounting. Future value, the value to which an amount today will grow if it earns a specific rate of interest over a given time period. So what is $1,000 going to be in two years if I earn 10%? Now, that's what these tables are for. Let's go look. We have four sets of tables, and you have to be really clear on which table you're using. So if you don't have your book, um, buddy up so that you can see what I'm talking about. It's pretty important. So on page 637, 637, this is called the future value of a lump sum. Or the table sum. This is actually not working for you guys. Okay. <laughs> it just looks silly. Okay. Um, so that's a lump sum. This, this table is for lump sum. It means I put in one amount, and I want to know what it's going to look like in the future. So this factor that I'm looking for here, um, you're going to go over to the 10% column and go down two years, and you're going to pick up that number, 1.21. It means you compound your interest annually.
pain. So I'm going to have twelve hundred and ten dollars in two years. Maybe this is a stupid question. It's one point two percent a year. Is that off that original thousand, or does it? If it's not one point two percent, if this is a factor, if you were reading this. Don't think of it as a percent. The only thing you use for, as a percent is this simply guides you to the call up. Okay, and yes, it is based off of that original lump sum. Okay. Okay. What's my thousand dollars going to be if I earn four percent? I want to know what it's going to be in five years. What do I multiply my thousand bucks by? One point two one seven. Okay, you get it. Now, next page. The next page, the title says, Table of Future Value Annuity Factors. An annuity is a payment, uh, uh, an equal periodic payment. An equal periodic payment meaning uh, at the end of every year, I put $1,000 into my savings account. I don't just put in one lump sum up here. Every year I get a bonus and I put a thousand bucks in. It's an annuity. It's an equal periodic payment. If I put in 500 bucks this month and 200 next month and then I don't put in any for 10 months, that's not an annuity. Because it's not equal and it's not on the exact same time period. Okay. So tell me what I would have in two years at 10%. From if I'm using, if I'm putting it in annually, it's an annuity. What's my factor? 2.1. 2.1. So I'm going to have $2,100. And I can prove that number. Not, I'm not going to take time. Okay, let's go to the next page. Okay, so. Again, just to reiterate, an annuity is an equal periodic payment. It's a fixed sum of money that occurs annually. Um, we just tried this one. If you want to build an account um, to $3,310 in three years, what amount will you have to save if you earn 10%? Okay, now let's look at that. This is, it's a little bit more complicated. This is basically, I've got what I want for the future value, right? I know this is what I want in three years. But I don't know what my X is, do I? But I'm trying to figure, is this an annuity or a lump sum? Okay, that's, this is a lump sum. It wants to know, what do I need to put in here if I want this amount in three years? This is always your formula. Principal times factor equals future value. And I would advise you whenever you work for future value or present value problems, that the first thing you do is write down that formula and fill in what you know. Because some of them are going to be multiplication problems and some are going to be division, depending on what you're solving for. What do I know in this question that I want $3,310? The future value. I know my future value, don't I? What am I solving for, principal or factor? Principal, that's what the question is. How much do I have to put in today? What's my factor? Um, oh, sorry, this is an annuity, but let's just use the lump sum. What's my factor if I'm earning 10% and this is just one lump sum I'm putting in? In which page am I on? The very first page, right? It's a lump sum, 10%, three years. My factor is 
1.331. This one's an annuity, so don't look up here on the board. How do I solve for x? I have to divide both sides by 1.331, don't I? So do that and tell me what you think I need to put in here, and then I'm going to have you prove that number. Tell me what you think I need to put in one time lump sum if I want $3,310. Just round up to the nearest dollar. What do you think I need to put in the bank? 2,487. I agree. I think I need to put $2,487 away. Now, prove that that works. Prove that that works. $2,487 today. How much am I going to have in three years at 10%? And you just turn around and do exactly what we did before you multiply by the back. Okay, let's try one more. Okay, I'm going to just give you um, one more to try. Um, let's say that I'm saving um, for college for my kid. And I want, okay, just a second, let this thing kind of takes a second to focus. There you go. Okay. I want, let's say that he's 10 right now. I want $80,000 in the bank in eight years. And I know I'm going to have to uh, invest at a pretty aggressive rate. So I'm going to estimate 8%. And I'm going to put money in annually when I get my profit sharing check at the end of the year. My question is to you, how much do I need to put in every year? Stop. There we go. Jeez. I want to. I want to have eighty grand in the bank when my kiddo starts college in eight years. I'm gonna put money away every year. I hope to earn eight percent a year. I. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So start by writing out your formula. Always. Principal times factor equals future value. Fill in what you know, and tell me how much I should put away every year. Yeah, pray to the nearest dollar. Connor, what's one thing I know in this formula? Yep, how much do I want? Okay. Um, Mariah, what's something else that I know? Do I know the principle? <laughs> sure. The, so principal is either if it's the lump sum, it's the amount you're going to put in up front. If it's an annuity, it's the amount of your periodic payment. That's, you know, that's it. Principal is a dollar amount. Okay. But if we're starting with no money. 
Yep, I'm sorry, there's no money, and that's my question. That's how much am I putting away, right? Do can I look up the factor? Yes. If you're not saying that with any great deal of confidence. Yes, you can absolutely look up the factor. Are you going to page 637 or 638? 638 because it's an equal periodic payment. Carlos, what is my factor? So I'm solving for X. How much am I putting away every year if that's my factor and I want to get to 80 grand? Okay. And of course, by the time you get there, it's not going to be 80 grand at all. It's going to be 110. I don't mean that literally. I mean the cost of the education. How bosses look at me like, what do you mean? Um, okay, so now I have to, if I want to make this work, I've got to divide both sides by 10.637, right? This is just basic algebra, which isolates my x. How much is my x? $7,521. Now, do this for me. If I just put that money away every year and I never earned a penny on it, how much would I have in my eight years? Anywhere close to my 80 grand? No, you wouldn't. Because there's no interest. Okay, let's do that. Uh, so if I just put this away and never earned a penny on it, I'd have how much, Jordan? What did you just say? So I never earned a penny on it. I'd only have this, but I want that. Therefore, you can construe that you made how much of interest about? 20 grand. Power of time. That's compounding. That's why we like times on our side. Okay. Last thing off of here, and then we'll spend the last uh, bit of class on our <clears throat> on our uh, cash <laughs> This is just a basic, it's like you know, pi or the Fibracci uh, algorithm. It's just a mathematical fact that whatever you divide into 72 will double. So, for example, if I'm earning, I think I'm gonna earn 6% a year, how long is it gonna take me for my money to double? Right, 12 years. That's pretty helpful. We do this with all sorts of statistics, like population. We're growing 3% a year. How long before the human race doubles in size? Right? It's just a mathematical fact. So the rule of 72 is just kind of nice to know. So that, I mean, if I look at my investments today and I say I'm making 6%, how long before it's going to double? Right? So that's nice to know. It's just a rule of thumb. Okay, let's kick off here. I'm going to ask you for um, Monday, let me...